In Teppan's early metagame, it's safe to say green is as good as gold. The color brings a lot of utility in the form of shields, healing, MP boosts, sealing, and decent damage. All of those aspects make it pretty strong on its own, or splashed with another color like black or red in some situations. Nurgorgante's best deck, in my opinion, uses a mix of black and green cards for very solid results. Go watch the video I did with one example if you haven't already. Fans of green cards will naturally be drawn to green heroes like Chun-Li and Mega Man X, and to be honest, X's hero arts are very lackluster. So setting him aside for now, I wanted to showcase what Chun-Li can really do. Before we dive in, I just want to say thanks to everyone for writing and subscribing. It's been an absolute joy to connect with so many people. So if you haven't already, I want to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel if you dig the deck videos and turn on the bell so you'll know when my next video comes out. Unlike my previous deck builds, this one is relatively expensive, unless you've gotten lucky with your packs. Expect to shell out some souls to craft some of the staples, but the versatility they bring make it worthwhile. First, the hero art, Yawn. It costs 15 AP to put a bonus effect on one of your units that will give you 4 MP when it dies. You unlock this hero art by leveling Chun-Li to level 10. Block and Wall Jump are cheap actions that give a unit shield. The difference is that Block only works on green units, but this is mono green, so no problem for us. Beast Cannon gives plus two attack to a friendly unit. Evasive Action is a very strong card that returns a unit's attack and HP to their original values. You can debuff an opponent's unit or heal up one of your own. Emergency Strike deals damage to a random unit equal to the HP of one of your green units. Refuel gives 7 HP to all of your units. We're running a few units with Victory, meaning they get a buff when they kill another unit. Makoto in particular gets plus one plus one when that happens. Kareen gets plus two to HP, and the 8 MP cost Chun-Li gets plus one plus two. Kurupeko gives two HP to a random friendly unit other than itself when it hits the board. Dizzy Yaku is your sealer, meaning he nullifies all abilities and effects of the unit in front of him. Feline and Iris are fundamentally similar, low attack and high HP in exchange for MP boost. Iris also comes with a shield. Speaking of shields, Zangief gains one when he hits the board. And your legendary is Heavenly Kicks Chun-Li. I cannot stress enough how good this unit is low MP cost, agility for double attack speed, and combo to deal damage twice on one attack. Craft her if you don't have her already. So right off the bat, I'm gonna wanna start with Zangief because he's beefy, he's got the shield, there's a lot of value to him, so we wanna put him on the board. And you know, that was a good decision because Ryu is playing this you know, somewhat sizable creature with Rush. Um, but you know, the current situation we're in, Zangief is okay in the bottom lane, and we're actually going to choose to put our second one out here in the middle um, to kind of contend with the one creature that Ryu has right now. Uh, he's going to throw out Sakura against Zangief, which would ultimately uh, result in a trade, but we're going to drop uh, Kurebeko here, who's going to give us some bonus health. But then out comes True Faith, and at this point I'm a little confused because this deck is... You know, it's a little unconventional, uh, but I'm going to shield up Zangief again so that he doesn't get the free trade um, and will ultimately come out on top. He throws out Sense of Duty. I'm not really sure why. Uh, probably he's wanting to clear my Zangief on the bottom. It doesn't really do much for his uh, unit in the middle lane. Uh, so Zangief and Sakura trade, which is fine because we still have board control. Um, and he throws out Volvadon. We're not super worried about it at this point because we're way ahead in terms of board control and at this point you're going to see how we use yawn we're going to throw yawn on kurubeka because we know it's going to die uh so that unit dies and you get four mp instant value so you can put another unit out on the board uh you saw me trying to drag iris up there but he actually beat me with shinku hadouken so iris comes out is going to be able to deal with volvadon and we have plenty of mp to throw around for something else uh, you see me throw out Makoto there, uh, quickly throwing out Beast Cannon so Makoto can clear Guy uh, and get victory. Now he's going to counter with Cool Headed Devil Hunter, uh, but he's actually not going to get as much value as he would like to here because he's only going to get one unit out of it, uh, whereas we get to keep two. Uh, so we're actually in great shape right now. We've got a lot of MP, we've got another Yawn on deck, 
um, and two creatures. So we're going to put Zangief out there because he's got lots of value. Uh, I tried to yawn Makoto before she died, but I wasn't fast enough. So in this instance, we're going to throw yawn on Iris, uh, get that instant value right there when she dies, and then we're going to drop the big Chun-Li, uh, the uh, 8 MP cost Chun-Li. Uh, so we throw her down up there to contend at the top. Um, he's going to throw out... Uh, another machine in the middle. Uh, we're going to throw out Feline to get some more of that MP boost. And we're in all honesty, we're in great shape. He's got Shinku Hadouken. He's going to clear Chun-Li, which is ultimately fine for us. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so Feline down in the bottom. Zangief uh, ultimately trades with that unit in the middle. I tried to get Yawn out there, but again, I was just a little too slow. So you want to be fast on those Yawns to get the most optimum trade. So I was forced to put Yawn on Feline, who is inevitably going to die uh, to this Neon Tiger. Um, so we're actually going to throw out uh, Beast Cannon here uh, close to the last moment because we want Makoto uh, to trade um, with his unit in the top. So Makoto's going to get that trade. Uh, we're going to throw out Karin in the middle. Um, we've still got Feline hanging out at the bottom, who is eventually going to die to Neon Tiger, and that's fine. Uh, Feline will serve his purpose. We drop Heavenly Kicks Chun-Li for tons and tons of value. He throws out Fate Defying Ryu, but in all honesty, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to throw Yawn on Heavenly Kicks Chun-Li, because if he's smart, that's what he's going to target. Because um, she's going to be sitting doing four damage every single swing, and she's attacking twice as fast because she's a beast. Uh, so we throw out our sealer uh, just to lock up um, Fate Defying Ryu and get rid of his agility so he's swinging slower. Um, and at this point, he's going to, you know, throw out another creature. We're going to shield up Heavenly Kicks Chun Li because we want her to hang around. Uh, but, you know, this game is kind of snowballed out of control in terms of our favor. So at this point, it's already a wrap. There's nothing that this Ryu can do in this situation. And Heavenly Kicks Chun Li is going to close out that game for us and get the W. This match ends a lot faster, and you're going to see why. Uh, so we're up against Wesker here. And, you know, this can be tricky because Wesker has a lot of removal that actually goes through shields because Destroy is not really affected by shields. Uh, so straight away, we're going to throw out Iris because she's got great value. She gives good MP boost. She's got sticking power with that shield. Uh, and he's going to throw an Axel uh, to pop that shield, which, you know, th this is weird. I, I remember when I played uh, this game, my first thought was, what? And it's going to get even weirder. Because I drop Heavenly Kicks Chun-Li and he immediately throws out a precision to burn it down. Which is, I mean, if you've been playing Teppin, you know, this is not an orthodox deck. This is strange. Uh, so that's why I actually take a moment to sit here and think, I'm like, mm, okay. Uh, so I decide to use the bonus MP from, uh, from reacting to throw out uh, Emergency Strike and get rid of Axel just so Iris can stick around and get a little bit more value. Um, so what you're going to see us do here uh, is we're looking to drop Yawn here on Iris because we know she's going to be kicking the bucket here soon. And we'll get lots of value out of her. So we drop Zangief in the middle. He's got stopping power. Uh, and now we're just kind of waiting. We're waiting to see what happens uh, because we know Iris is on deck to die. And that'll get us another play. But we've already got a good amount of MP anyway. Uh, so we're going to drop our second Zangief up at the top. Uh, and then we see why he was waiting to make a play. He wanted to throw out Spreading Infection. Uh, so we're going to respond in a couple of ways. Uh, we're actually going to use Evasive Maneuvers to heal up, or Evasive Action, I forget what it's called, my apologies. Basically, we're healing up Iris and we're going to shield her. And at this point you'll notice he's throwing down False Throne to clear the heaviest MP cost units from his deck for some Ouroboros shenanigans. So, you know, the stack takes place, he gets zombies, uh, you know, we further control our board a little bit and you're going to start to see things pop here the Zangis do their work and we're actually going to throw out beast cannon on iris so she will wipe this last zombie uh he attempts to do mutual destruction but we don't care about that because we've got a shield so we throw a shield on iris his mutual destruction is going to do nothing and because he realizes just how deep he's in he surrenders Yon Lee is certainly capable in Teppin's meta right now, but there's one deck in particular that will seem like an impossible hill to climb. I'm talking about Halt. Good players will keep your units from doing anything useful, and you don't have a lot of answers to their board clear, since Shield won't protect against effects that destroy them. Just know that if you see a Morrigan, unless you get a great start and have a little bit of luck, you're probably going to have a bad time. 
Before we wrap things up, here's what I'm working on next. A Wesker deck that's more meme than might, but can be hilariously fun to play. And an in-depth guide on what you need to know about playing Teppin. In the meantime, check out the game's subreddit and Discord for discussion, deck lists, and the latest news. Links are in the description. Adios.